Welcome to the Backpack and Blisters Podcast. Everybody with me today is John Kelly, a man that thinks all Mythbusters sleep in debunk beds. What's going You're on? You're right. You're so right. And, and and that's one of the worst dad jokes I've heard in a long time. Debunk? We're well, talking myths. It has to relate. I have respect for that, though, man. I have respect for bad dad jokes. Okay, fair enough. Fair Major enough. respect. And and Carl, you've got a lot of them. So I have lots of respect for you. Thank you. And I'm Carl Mandrilli, for those that can't figure it out. I'm the, the typical host. Uh, JK is our guest host today. Man, really appreciate you joining. What's going oh, on, man. man? You know, I, I'm just... I just recorded a podcast for my personal podcast, the Backpacking Podcast. Okay. Uh, we actually just recorded this afternoon. And so I'm just in a podcast mood today. I was just okay. like, you know, I called Carl. I said, Carl, please let me be on your podcast. <laughs> please just let me be on the Backpacking and Blisters podcast. And yeah. Carl said, I'll tell you what, I'll only charge you $200 to be That's on right. this time. That's and right. I was like, I'm in. Let's go. And then you said, I'm going to try to drop my podcasting as frequently as possible and success already. So, well, done. yeah, I know. Like I, I, <laughs> I said, I'd, I'd love to talk about the backpacking podcast as much as I possibly could. And so um, in you're doing so that, right. you're letting me talk about the backpacking podcast. So thank you. <laughs> All right. I got I got to rehash a few things with you because I want to say about six months ago, you're like, hey, you and I should do a backpacking trip. I'm planning to come out to Colorado in the spring. And I was like, ooh, I would love to go backpack with you, but the spring is very dodgy in terms of the weather and this and that. I don't know if you've been tracking Colorado spring and really into the summer, but we had a crazy spring where it's it rained like pretty much every single day and a lot of times like heavy, heavy rain where we would have gotten flooded out on a backpacking trip. Do you realize this? Uh, yeah, I just followed your wisdom. You said it's not okay. a good idea, so we didn't do it. This and, year in particular, and then it continued on the summertime. We've had two days without rain, I think, since April. But um, anyway, so I so I wasn't putting you off, and so I said, "How about we do this in the fall?" And then I didn't hear back, which is pretty typical. I typically get ghosted when I really throw the invite well, out strong. Here's here's what happened with my fall. I can't say, but I, I will talk off camera. Okay. I have a very good reason why I can't do fall. Yeah, I know that you I got actually had a trip trans- going on that I'm not invited on. That's all I know. Well, I'm actually not going on that trip now. Because I'm not invited. Yeah, but when they when they didn't invite you, I said I'm not going. There's a they. There's there's some mysterious. I can't I can't say anything. Okay. Uh, um, actually, the reason uh, I'm not going this fall is because the first week of September, I'm starting uh, a job at a new church. Oh. Okay. So I uh, can't really take vacation right away uh, to go do a trip. Got to work so, that into the contract, man. Be like, hey, I'll take your job, but I'm taking a vacation out the gate. Well, I tried. <laughs> All right. I'll be your negotiator next time. No, they said no. And I, well, it was, it was mostly because I said I wanted to go backpacking with Carl Mandrioli, and they were like, no. Yeah. So, They're like, don't you know his podcast? He invites everybody and nobody goes with him. Well, they're like, just, just like, you don't need to be around that negative influence was exactly. really what it came down to. So I was like, okay, I, I understand. I won't do it. <laughs> I'll be good. Okay. Fair enough. Um, well, hopefully one day we'll go together. I know that, yeah, you got a lot going on, which congrats on the new job. Thank and you. yeah, so this episode, so you're guest hosting, but we actually have a guest, which we'll bring on here in a couple minutes. We've got a gentleman, Nathan, known as Backpackerish on YouTube and on the social medias. And uh, yeah, excited to talk to him. So he's, he's coming on. So we got it's kind of like a, a like a double guest, we got guest host and guest on the episode. So pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But speak. OK, so you're at a new church and I got a Bible verse for the episode. First Timothy four, seven have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tales. Rather train yourself to be godly. Mm. All right. So this is a specific reference where Paul's encouraging Timothy to defend the truth against false teachings. So is this, is that, is that like our job for this episode? Do you think? I think so. I think what we're trying to do here is we're trying to keep people from straying away from the truths that we have in backpacking and not listen to these silly myths that people have created over the years Mm. that have somehow been interwoven (laughs) into the culture of backpacking. (laughs) Do like you ha- okay how, do you have a do you have one you're gonna share oh i've got a couple i've got okay. i've got a backup in case my first one gets used you think it's gonna get used i don't know it's okay. possible i figure it's only safe to have two for those that are just listening on the audio apps um we have for the uh the youtube watchers we have like our little titles and our and our pictures and and jk put down jk hates mountain house so your myth isn't like mountain house is good is it no, but a funny story. So okay. when, when you sent me what we we're going to be talking about, I already had written down what I wanted. And I was kind of, we got started a little later than we anticipated. So I, while, while I was waiting around, I actually got online and just decided to read some myth articles. 
Okay. And the very first one. Oh, wait, I wait, had, wait. Myths about backpacking or just myths in general? <laughs> myths about backpacking. Yeah, okay. I wasn't I wasn't reading about like Roman mythology or anything. Okay. But uh <laughs> but uh the number one on the, the first list I read, there were 10 things, and the number one was that Mountain House is really good. What? No way. That Are you was, serious? That was that was actually the Wait, myth. Who's on that the con one. Who, who provided that? Is it like section hiker uh, or yeah, it was section hiker? It was, was section it really? hiker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that people believe that. I think that's I, I have a bone to pick with section hiker. I think he, he puts a lot of nonsense out there and pretends it's real. So <laughs> yeah. I, like, okay, do you ever listen to comedians and they're like, So I was like at the doctor one day and the doctor said such and such. Can you believe he said that? And they're just like they're literally just making stuff up and pretending oh, it's yeah. real so they can have a reaction. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's what he's doing. Maybe, maybe, okay. but I do know that I've heard people that say they like to take Mountain House with them, and I just look at them like there's some like they have seven heads. Like, well, no, okay, it's convenient to you know because it's at like Walmart and different stores. But you've yeah. heard them say, "I love Mountain House." I had somebody say that once. Okay, and, and make and a couple thing, good meals, but come do, on. Do you remember there was a there was a YouTuber named Tim Watson? Do you remember Tim Watson? Is that like um, YouTube like year one? I don't know. He was YouTube back in like. 2016 through 2018 okay 2019 2020 and i think he just he just kind of stopped he got bored or something quit making videos but he was an ambassador for mountain house mm, well there and, wasn't as much competition at the time though right well he was singing the praises though okay of mountain house so gotcha. i heard it on video that's <laughs> that's pretty bad man that's fair pretty enough. bad fair enough okay if, if you're i love years tim, ago i love tim don't take yeah. a personal tim please in the 1990s i like mountain house but that's yeah beside the point okay it's not about Mountain House. We're moving on to so we got some legit myths. We've got we're bringing on backpackerish. We're gonna find out what the heck backpackerish even means, what it's all about. And so here we go, Nathan. Welcome to the show, my friend. What's going on? Absolutely nothing and everything all at the same time. Okay, awesome. Sounds like typical dad life. So, all yeah. right. So you got it. Okay, give us the rundown. What what is what does backpackerish mean? Uh, it, it, so. I really don't consider myself a backpacker. I'm kind of a wannabe. So backpacker-ish is my way of saying, come on, everybody who's not really a backpacker, we'll hang out <laughs> over here. And the people who know what they're doing, we'll just follow them and talk about them behind their backs and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So what are you saying about JK behind his back? Well, it's behind his back. I can't say it now. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, it's okay, man. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it. I'll be offended and probably cry and lay in fetal position later, but you can tell me it's all good. Well, it, no, it, the only thing I would ever say to JK is that he hasn't put out a video in forever. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm on sabbatical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. whereas you're a YouTube, a backpacking YouTuber who's trying to be backpacker ish, JK is a real backpacker who's kind of YouTuber ish. Is that fair? No, that's Dude, fair. No, I'll, I'll take YouTuberish. <laughs> Do I need to change my name? <laughs> you have you haven't put out a YouTuber. video on your channel. In, is is it like five months? I want to say it's been since February or March. I think. Okay, we can. I've got ideas. It's been a while. Like if you need ideas, man, I got plenty. Well, I actually have a bunch of stuff in the can that I'm gonna start okay. releasing here in the next month or two. So, I got a bunch of stuff lining up, getting back into it. I did take kind of a sabbatical. I've I don't I do I do uh video production stuff on the side. Okay. And so I had a series of videos for this doctor and uh took a lot of time. Okay. You doctor. should release those on your YouTube channel. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, everybody would be bored out of their mind on those videos. <laughs> you want to learn about the scapula? Let's go. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. Um let's so okay. So you kind of revealed a little bit, but What's like, even though you yeah. say you're kind of backpacker ish, you're still providing backpacking content and you're an authority figure on YouTube. So, like, what is your content about if you're trying to attract new yeah. viewers? So, it, the whole point of me starting the channel was because when I started backpacking, there was no channel that met the needs that I had, right? Okay. Like, when I started, it was in 2018. And everybody else in backpacking was just starting out, right? As far as YouTube and social media and all that went. But there was nobody in the Rocky Mountains in Canada. Like, all I could watch was through hiking stuff. Right, and right, right. I, I don't have months of my life. I, there's a bunch of stuff changing in my life and timing. Yeah, he's got time and for no that, one right? was, Yeah, no one was telling <laughs> me how to fight a grizzly bear or do any of that stuff. It was just like, yeah, get really light stuff and you'll walk forever. And I'm like, well, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not me. So I wanted to do something different. Wait, is one of your wrong, videos man. how to fight a grizzly bear? No, but I saw one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He lost. <laughs> okay. Because I, I would love to know. I have my own theories about it, but I haven't had the pleasure. Uh, <laughs> okay. So so you're trying to appeal to a different group, not just your typical through hikers, not the epic, like, ultra lighters, but just your everyday person who's trying to go backpacking. Yeah. All right. Much. So you 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 would consider yourself the weekend warrior. Yeah. I, I would have, except now I'm starting to do some – longer trips during this so now you're through hiking and you're a hypocrite okay got it. exactly i'm trying to figure out how to back out of this is what i'm doing how do i how do i make videos about like tonight instead of three days because right yeah well so, and yeah, honestly yeah. honestly dude you you're nailed it because like when i started backpacking um i was training for kilimanjaro back in 2015 2016 and i remember like every video was like darwin or dixie and it was all appalachian trail like mm. it wasn't even pct and the other it was all appalachian trail and it was just either you through hiked or you watched suge make jokes about yeah. hammocks and that was that was those were your options really at the time right and uh you almost felt like you weren't allowed to just be a weekend backpacker yeah you know and, and so it's i'm with you on that i get it 100 percent get it there's not a lot on Kilimanjaro in terms of like for the weekend backpacker, I would guess. So maybe we could do an episode on that. How to hike Mount Kilimanjaro if you just go hiking every once in a while. Yeah, we'll just go hit it a couple of days and come home. Does that sound good? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm in. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so you've been doing this for a little while. Whether you want to claim to be full, you know, like a big time backpacker or not, like surely you've learned a few tips and tricks while out on your adventures and, and I know you've gone this summer. So give us, give us like one tip or one thing you've learned this summer, a takeaway we have for, for everybody out there. Yeah, I'm a little bit ashamed of this one. So, and it actually causes me some frustration because it, I've had to hike with a tent a bunch this summer and have another trip coming up with a tent instead of a hammock. Okay. And I've learned that I prefer to hike with only one trekking pole. Hmm. And that really frustrated me because my tent is the old X mid right before they went to the pro version. It was on massive drop or whatever. Oh um, yeah. So I need a second trekking pole, but now I don't want to carry it in my hand. So I literally have to carry another pole <laughs> for my tent <laughs> that is designed to not have to carry poles. So I learned that and it, it ticked me off a little. Okay. All right. JK, what's the solution, man? How do you solve that problem? Get a new tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh he's he's left and he's grabbing oh you got the carbon pole okay it's i was actually gonna say that there's makes yeah. a carbon pole so the v flex right. poles they're super light they, they work good yeah right. well and i've got the x mid 2 pro i just okay. got it this year and i committed to sleeping in a tent for the summer like you i and i hate sleeping in a tent but man those x mids are nice mm. yeah i, well, I that like was actually the other thing i learned Sorry, I jumped all over you. Okay. That was the you, other thing I learned was okay. how important a good sleeping pad was. Um, okay. So I love my hammock, and I've been for years. I've been sleeping on the uh, the Static V insulated, the climate pad. Oh yeah, yeah. And I couldn't do that all summer long with a couple of longer trips that I had. Right. So I got the the big Agnes, the thick one with the thicker sides. Right. Yeah, nice. that makes a difference. That, that, that makes a difference. Yeah. All right. One thing I've learned about just a lot of the content providers out there is a lot of them go solo. And so um, my solution is just like maybe hike with some folks and use one of their trekking poles, because unless everybody's using a trekking pole tent, there's usually extra trekking poles laying around. Then you don't have to carry it. That's my suggestion. That's but, good uh, not That's everybody good. does that. Like I, I've just learned that. And it's, and it's weird. I went, I did go with um, Jesse from Backcountry Forward and Justin Outdoors. And it's a weird thing. It makes sense to go solo because every once in a while they'll peel off and then just like walk into a meadow and start like yapping at the camera by themselves. And it just like, looks like they're talking to themselves. And so it makes sense why they'd want to go. Cause it looks really socially awkward. So it is. I get it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I actually quit making trip videos and a lot of it was because of that. Like, yeah, it just, I would be, I'd be stopping somewhere to talk. And the next thing I know, there's someone walking behind me. They're looking at you like you're some kind of idiot. Right. <laughs> it's so it's just it's weird. It's like, weird. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I specifically started making trip videos because, and, and again, this goes back to what I wanted to do when I started. There was no, I had no idea what to expect. Like the Rocky Mountains are insane. Right. Right. Like 
and to not know what to expect. I, so I specifically make videos with like maps and markers on them for people. And mm. yeah, right. they don't get a lot of views, but I've had people already tell me, Hey, I found a new place to go and took my kids. Exactly. And yep. so for me, that That's was cool. cool. They don't get a lot of views yet, but yeah, you're on your won't. way. Yeah, okay. Well, I appreciate your humility, but they're, you're coming, man. You're coming. Uh, all right. So, okay. This episode, really, the heart of this episode is about backpacking myths. Things that people, Ooh. like real backpackers and backpackerish people, believe that we know to be false. We're going to bust some myths today. All right. So, since you're the guest backpackerish, um, I, I charge you with coming with three. And then JK and I each have one, but JK might have a bonus one. So, uh, we'll start with you, Nathan. What you got? Okay. Well, I'm going to, first off, I'm going to say, I'm not going to use like the top, like cliche myths and I'm going to say them out loud so that JK can't use them after. And okay. Take them I'll, I'll totally use them list. anyways. Cause I'm lazy. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not going to be what, un unlazy. <laughs> sounds like some strategy <laughs> involved here. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm not talking about how nothing that's waterproof is actually waterproof. Okay. I'm not talking about go to hiking boots. They're the best. You don't need trail runners. And right. I'm definitely not talking about sleeping naked is warmer. Those are the ones <laughs> I'm not talking about. Right. I actually had someone who thought that they like, <laughs> that's, like, that's a real day. debate in the backpacking community. People try both ways. Yes. Just, you're not wrong. It, that actually is, a, that's actually kind of a hot button debate too. It with is. That, yeah. So. Okay. And you don't so want to talk about talking nakedness. About so thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> let's demonstrate no we're not okay yeah no no demonstration yeah. all right so you, uh, you're you're trying to clear out the cliche answers which probably jk and i have talked about at some point i'm guessing on our our podcast but um yeah we've definitely talked about it on the backpacking podcast for sure all right so you're building up your answer this better be good what you, what it you better be, yeah so it, the first myth i have is that backpackers in general have any sort of specialized training or fitness level or skill set Mm. that there's any requirement whatsoever um, because there's not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, one of the guys in our most recent trip might disagree with you. <laughs> he struggled keeping up and was like so mad at the variety of fitness levels we had on our trip, but you're right. There's yeah. Do you agree with that one JK? There's no oh, yeah. fitness I requirement. Mean, I mean, I think, I think there's no requirement to go backpacking. I think there might be on certain trips right. because certain people should not be going to the high Sierras if they haven't taken a two mile walk in the last 13 years. Right. That, you know, <laughs> you, I think there's a limit, but I think you're dead. Right. I mean, I'm not a skinny guy, you know, and I went out a couple of weeks ago and hiked 16 miles in an evening, you know, mm. and you, you can do it. It's and possible. So yep. It's that, that's a great point. The problem, though, is if you go couch to 10 miles or whatever your, your distance is for the trip, is you're just more prone to things like stress fractures and just like yeah. injuries that wouldn't typically happen if you have been going for, you know, like walking the dog and this and that, especially if you're walking the dog with a backpack on. But, <laughs> but generally speaking, you're right. And if you're gonna, better to ease into it still than just to like tackle Kilimanjaro right away. But yeah. 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 I, I think I have a caveat. Is it in the States? How do you say that? Is it a caveat or a caveat? Caveat. Uh, caveat. caveat. Yeah, Whatever. yeah. <laughs> what is it? I have a, a statement to make. Ask, okay, listen, don't get an attitude, okay? <laughs> I have a loophole to my myth busting. <laughs> so I think my my statement on that would be that it's more important to know what your limitations are mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. keep yourself within them or just outside of them mm -hmm. than it is to feel like you have to reach a certain level of anything before you go. Right. Yeah. So can I tell you a little story that goes along with that real quick? Is it in support of what he said or in yes, contrary? It's, okay. it's in support. Because I in have support. a contrary statement to that. So you, you support him first. Go ahead. So so we had a friend from India come in and we decided to take him for a hike in the Red River Gorge. And it's one of the easiest hikes we have. It's this place called Hanson's Point. It goes out on the um like it's almost like Pride Rock in the middle of the woods. And so you go out and you can see 360 degree view. It's one of the most beautiful views in the entire Red River Gorge here in Kentucky. And uh, it's a two and a half mile hike there and back. Very easy, very minimal hills. We get there. We almost get to the point. He goes, I don't think I can do this. Mm. And we're like, dude, you're two and a half miles in. You got to, you kind of yeah, have out. to at this point, you know? Right. So we go out to the point. He's amazed. He thinks it's beautiful. We're hiking back and we get to the road 
And he looks at my friend David and he just sits. He couldn't even walk the tenth of a mile to the parking lot. <laughs> he just sits and he goes, he goes, brother, go get the car. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like and, and he just, I mean, he was so sore. Um, he was actually a, a missionary for our VBS for our kids. So he was supposed to come speak to the little kids that night. He didn't come. Right. He stayed at the house because he, he couldn't wiped. walk. He, oh my gosh. He, five miles of fairly easy terrain. Right. And he was destroyed. And then we weren't taught we weren't carrying heavy backpacks or anything either. But he was what destroyed. I just heard, what I just heard was that you broke your vacation Bible school. People. <laughs> yeah i actually went that night and people were like where's where's robbie i said i think i killed him <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think that goes with what i'm saying is that i like you know nathan's saying like know your limitations and i would say based on my experience taking various folks into the backcountry about 80 percent of the people do not know 80 percent would say That's they can fair. do way more than they actually can do and i might be one of those guys i'm about to head on a trip that i don't even know if i can do this trip and i'm going anyway and so I don't know if it's super safe to do, but I just think that it's hard to know your limitations. And for the few folks out there that do, you know, you're good blessed on you. with wisdom. Yeah, good on you. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that might just be for me being a chicken and doing things in small steps too. Who knows? Yeah. Well, and some people do that. They're very conservative. They're like, I want, I don't want to overextend myself. I want to see if I can do, you know, point A to point B, then go a little farther the next time, which is very reasonable. But um, anyway, okay. That was a good one. I like that. What's, what's number two, Nathan? What you got? Oh, number two and this one's specifically geared towards our YouTube audience, is that anyone has all of this figured out, especially <laughs> YouTubers, right? That we're all like just a different level of ignorant in different things. Right. <laughs> and nobody's like master list will be good for everybody. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I have a strong reaction to that one. JK, what you got in response? <laughs> I think I think a lot of us who do YouTube, I know for me, I was really getting into backpacking in 2018. That's what okay. I mean, even if you read, you can't now because the about's been changed because it's five years ago. But I actually put on there, I am a beginner backpacker, and this is me learning how to do this. Like as you and, go. Yeah, as I go. And so right. a lot of the stuff I'm saying, this is what I figured out, this is stuff I'm mm -hmm. learning. And I would have people get on some of the comments were hilarious. Right. I mean, just just over the top angry. Yeah, and I, and and I would just be like, <laughs> "Thank you, all right, man. Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks for uh, commenting and helping the algorithm." <laughs> um, <laughs> That's hilarious. So yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, we don't like most YouTubers. We we just know what we know, and we're just trying to share what we know. Yeah. So. And I would say welcome to the Backpacking Blisters podcast, everybody. That's what our show is all about, is we just kind of point out each other's mistakes and then harp on them yeah. nonstop to show that anybody can do this. And even <laughs> though my typical co-host, Derek, we've gone a million times, we're still making ridiculous, ridiculous mistakes every single time we go. So true that. Um, all right. You got, you got one more, Nathan? I got, I got two more, but I'm only going to give you one. Okay. Uh, and that's that. It's it's always safer to be with a larger group of people. We just talked about like this. You, you go by yourself. You don't have enough trekking poles to set up your tent. I know, but I'm <laughs> saying it specifically. <laughs> I have enough. I bought spares. Okay. <laughs> that brought out a visceral reaction in Carl just now. Yeah. I didn't mean to set him off. I'm sorry. 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 No. I just want consistent storylines here, folks. All right. Okay, so go with a large group, it's safer. Go ahead. No, I'm saying that's the myth. Is that it's, okay. Is that it's safer to go with the larger group. Mm. So, because when I go backpacking, I run, because the recreational space for day hiking in, at least where I am in the Rockies in Canada, is so accessible to so many people that I will avoid the large groups of people because I know they're doing things that are irresponsible. Mm. And will attract wildlife that I do not want uh, anywhere gotcha. near where I'm sleeping. Okay. Yeah. So you'd rather surprise the bears, what you're saying. Well, I make enough noise by myself. I, okay. I, I, I have yet to run into a bear in the whatever, 70, 100, whatever nights I've had in the Rockies in grizzly country. Did you say 70, 100? Like 7, yeah, 7, 0, 1, 0, 0. <laughs> 70, 70,000 and 100 nights. That's, my you're, entire you're pretty experienced. Yeah, yeah. That's I impressive. Go back 
That's Go impressive. Why do you only have so many videos, man? <laughs> well, it was before YouTube existed. Oh, right. yeah. Back, yeah. Right? So, oh, yeah. You gosh. and Abe Lincoln went backpacking, apparently. So, <laughs> Yeah. He was All an right. empire hunter. That's right. JK, do you agree or disagree? Oh, I 100% agree. 100% agree. You think it's safer to go by yourself? I don't know if it's safer to go by yourself, but it do, just because you have more people doesn't mean it's safer. Mm. Okay. Statistically, it does. Like, if you look at any, anywhere in grizzly bear zone, f there's never been a person in a group of four or more killed by a grizzly bear, as far as I know. Anywhere in the world, when you're grouped together four or more. That Stats. still doesn't mean that it's safer. <laughs> uh, I will just stand here's the by thing, my here's comment. The, here's the thing to think I need about. no rebuttal to that. <laughs> it does, I mean, that, that's a statistic about grizzly bears. Guess what? I don't it's have in Kentucky. Statistic. Grizzly bears. Okay. Yeah. So Fair I enough. that 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 means that means like like you can't grow oranges in Antarctica. Great. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything for me. Um, it's like I, I just uh, the the thing is a lot of times it can be. Especially if you've got somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, yeah, and and maybe they're trying to keep up with everybody, and they get injured because of what's going on, and then you've got to protect them. And I watched a friend of mine almost fall off the side of a cliff because he was trying to help somebody else who dropped their water bottle mm. because they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. Okay, and so it's amazing the little things that could happen when you're in a group that wouldn't happen otherwise, right? And speaking about that, things that wouldn't happen otherwise, um, if you're new to the show, you can't learn things like you can't grow oranges in Antarctica anywhere else. That's only That's right. here on this show. So welcome. Even Thanks though for... I'm the host of the Backpacking Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use that on your show. It's on my show now. <laughs> All right. Nathan, you were going to say something in response to, to my um, ingenious stat. Go ahead. Yes. That, I don't think that's true. I think there's uh, – so I'm – even though I like to backpack, I also like to hear like horrible things about people that get attacked in nature. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> there's another podcast that's not affiliated with any of backpacking at all okay. um, called Tooth and Claw. Okay. And it's just a story about like the biology and the attacks of animals around the world that have happened and things like that. And there's been attacks on camps and stuff like that that they've gone through they're freak attacks that shouldn't happen so statistically i would say there are more attacks of groups of four or less but you said none and i don't think that's correct okay well i would like to point out that we now have two podcasts other than my own that have been advertised on the show already and we're just part way through the show and i'm starting one next week in it no okay <laughs> the backpackerish <laughs> podcast all right i don't i don't have stats handy because we're just we're just responding to what you had to say but um, I, I will just, I have a anecdotal evidence just outdoors had to defend himself against a grizzly bear a couple of years ago. He's by himself. He went with us. We had a group of eight guys and there were no attacks. So I think you can generally apply that to all scenarios, including in Kentucky. So there you go. Probably not. I was going to say, <laughs> I've gone out by myself multiple times and never seen a bear period. Okay. What about like you? You did the Sheltoe Trace Trail. Isn't there like a wild dog known to be on that trail that can attack the, you? The only time I dealt with with bears was when I was hiking with my friend Brian. Okay. And we could hear the bear in the woods next to us, and that was it. And he okay. just walked off, and there was no problem. Now, gotcha. the dogs, they'll surround groups of people. Right. And I know I, I can tell this story. I can't say names because I don't want to get the guy in trouble. But there was a group that was hiking, and – the dogs were surrounding them, and one of the dogs looked like it was going to bite one of the women in the group, and a mm -hmm. dude shot the dog. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, good call. So, and that was with a group. Yeah. So, I mean, but you're more likely to survive that because there's other people that could get bit. Apparently, the women are going to get bit ahead of you. So, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a secret. <laughs> okay. Why did he have a gun? Oh, yeah. dude, this guy. This guy. It's Kentucky. Welcome to Kentucky. I'm a bro. Canadian. We don't have guns. <laughs> yeah. Fair All enough. right. Fair enough. Okay. So, uh, those are, those are strong. I, I like, I like that one was controversial too. So thank you for, for bringing it. Um, now it's your turn to judge ours. So JK, what was your myth you came up with? Or what's one of them anyway? Well, it's that, it's that waterproof isn't really waterproof. <laughs> 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 no, mine is, uh, there's this thing that goes around where people will go and I used to buy into it. And I think I actually used it in a video once. And uh, I have learned my lesson since then. 
but that's that when you go to get water, it's a good idea to drink as much as you can. Camel up, fill up all your water. Yeah, and and camel up, we use it wrong too. Camel up is to store a lot of water, not drink a lot of water. No, but, but you store in your like body. That. That's what camels do. Camels store in their stomachs. They have a three part stomach. I know a lot about camels. Kind of weird. Do I get to tell my myth here, Carl? You no, I'm interrupting. Let me interrupt. Time and not I'm trying to. Talk. I'm trying to support you. So camel up, you, and you're saying it's not really camel. Up. Sorry, go ahead. You said you weren't going to bully me, and now you're bullying me. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, in, in all seriousness, uh, camel up is meant to store as much water as you can. That was the the whole point of it when that was being used. And a lot of people go and just drink all this water. Well, what your body does is it says, oh, we got too much water. Let's expel it. And it never actually absorbs into your body. And so right. people will go and drink all this water. And a couple miles down the road, they are dying of thirst. They've peed seven times. And they can't figure out why they're not hydrated right now. Okay. And that's usually what it is. And the worst part about that is because you're doing that, you're actually flushing out electrolytes too, which is causing extra damage. Um, right. That if you're not replenishing those, you're gonna hurt yourself. So it sounds like more of an electrolyte imbalance, though, right? That comes as a part of it, yeah. Okay, because when I down like a liter, I don't usually down a liter. I'll down down like twenty ounces when I'm at a stream. It's I usually throw the electrolyte mix into the water so that it's yeah, it's it's easier to down at that point. Anyway, is yeah. that do you agree with it's that or no? We actually had a, a, a nutritionist on the backpacking podcast. I don't know if I okay. told you about that podcast before. <laughs> um, but uh, we, <laughs> we had a nutritionist on there, and one of the things that she told us was, don't do that. It's not actually helping you. You're always better off to consistently drink a little bit at a time as you're hiking along. Every 10 to 15 minutes, okay, take another sip. Uh, that's way better than just chugging a ton of it at one time because your body typically expels most of that, gotcha. and it does you no good. Okay. So. There you go. Nathan, any Science. reaction? Do you agree or do you think the nutritionist is a uh, fraud? What do you got? I am not fighting with the nutritionist. Okay. They're, they know what they're doing way better than I do. But I think the thing that most people don't understand is you can actually make yourself sick and you can put your body into probably pretty problematic situation by drinking too much water. Okay. Right. So depending yeah. Oh, yeah. on your level of experience and how far you're going and where your next water is and all those things you, you can like, I think your body can only process like a liter of water an hour, mm -hmm. depending on how you're processing it and level of activity and stuff. Right. So if you don't know yourself, don't do that. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I think there are people that can do that because they've built that system for themselves. Right. But I don't think it's a good idea for everybody. It, yeah, it's, it's tough to have like hard and fast rules for, for things like that. I think there's a lot of general truths, especially when it comes to nutrition. But you're right. Some people, and it depends on how much you're exerting too. So if you're just kind of going at a slow pace, I, I would definitely agree. If you're, you know, fast packing or just charging up a mountain, you, you might be expelling that water a little little quicker. But um, that's a good one. I like that one, JK. Yeah. Well, I wasn't allowed to use my the one I wanted to. So use the one. What is it? What do you got? Second one. Go for it. Waterproof. Come on, man. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> I, we everybody everybody knows that's episode. important. We went next level and talked about water resistance, and we're trying to figure out what the heck that meant because it doesn't resist resist at all. But that's a different episode. It means it doesn't dissolve. <laughs> okay, we're not going to get into it. We <laughs> talked about it ad nauseum. So um, I've got one that's. I'm just going to tell you, strip. It's controversial. All right, this one's controversial, it. and it connects to one of uh, Nathan back. It's that versions. the Aqua Clip is great. It's that's not controversial. Nobody's ever disagreed with the aqua clip being a terrible thing. So <laughs> at least not on the show. Um, <laughs> okay. So we just went to Canada. We just went to grizzly bear country. And by default people, no matter what size of group you're in, people feel like you're in grizzly bear country. And now if you're going into black bear territory, they feel like it's a necessity to bring the bear spray. All right. So the myth is, that you need to have bear spray with you if you're going into bear country. And I say, no, I say, if you want to play it safe, yeah, bring a, bring a can for the group. You don't need to have eight bear spray cans for eight people going backpacking. I think that is overkill. I think it's a waste of weight. And because you're warding off the bear frequently with the sounds you're making, I think that it's just unlikely to happen. So, so I actually guaranteed everybody on the trip. I said, you know what? We're not going to even see a bear. I guarantee you that. And, um, just now doors allegedly saw a bear the last day, but he was the only one that saw it and apparently immediately <laughs> ran away and he was leading the group. So that's a, that's a story for another time. All right. Nathan went and grabbed a bear. Wait, wait, are you, are you, are you Justin a liar? Uh, 
I not officially. Okay. He's too nice a guy. I can't. Do I was that gonna to say. Him. I just can't see Justin lying to you. Yeah, I think he just made up a story. Now he's not a liar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, now Nathan's not. He's got like two bear sp bear spray cans next to his face, which is actually a little disconcerting. What's going on? Yeah. You, you, have, you have a strong strong reaction to what I'm saying. Go ahead. I absolutely do. Go Bears ahead. are terrifying, and I'm a big baby, <laughs> so okay. I will carry bear spray no matter what. No matter uh, what, you're in a group of eight yeah. guys who are literally yelling half the time they're talking, and you're going to have the bear spray. So, interesting story. Was hiking. It was a four day trip up in the Klein Wilderness area here in Canada, and there was four of us, five of us, and we, there's times, like you said, when those guys go off to shoot YouTube videos, it's weird. So right. you spread out at certain points, and you hike into places where people can't hear very well over certain things, right? So we came, I was about, I don't know, 100 yards back. There's three or four of us. We came over this rise. One of the guys at the front of the line scared this black bear. Thankfully, it ran that way instead of this way, but it was a group of four or more. It was a black bear, and it could have gone sideways in mm. a hurry, <clears throat> but we all had bear spray. Okay. Every single one of us had a can of bear spray. Gotcha. And, and one would not have been sufficient to ward off the black bears, what you're saying? Well, it would have been, but you don't know who's going to be at the front of the line with the bear spray. Isn't that when like the action hero stuff goes down? Like the guys in the front, you're like, here, throw me the spray. And as he's grabbing it, he's pulling the cap off when he catches it. And then boom, the spray comes out. The Avengers theme yeah. song starts playing. And exactly. You know? Yeah. I think, Everything I think we can all scale. create scenarios where everyone needs bear spray, but I think one for a group is sufficient. I don't think everybody needs it. I will say one caveat going back to that word is the Sierras where there's very aggressive black bear, especially in, Sequoia Kings Canyon Yosemite. I think that's the one spot you can make the case. So that's well, my. I, I will tell you this: in the Red River Gorge in Kentucky, don't worry about the bear spray. Okay, all right. I'm just okay. I'm just going to tell you truth. This is truth. Uh, I'm, oh, I may be opening Pandora's box. I don't know. We'll see. All right. But the bears in Kentucky are pansies. Okay. Like all you have to do is go boo. And they're gone. <laughs> like they're just really large, strong puppies. Really is what they are. All right. And I I'm going to shoot straight. I have never hung a bear bag. Because you don't need to. I right. sleep with it hanging off the end of my hammock. Okay. And I I've to never see that where I am. I've never had a problem. We so. slept with our food when we were in Canada, man. We were away from the bears, and it was they were not a concern. We had it in our vestibule. It was all good, and I was, yeah. So I think that that's, I think you can do that more frequently than you think you can. We still had the bear canisters. We still had the ursacs and stuff, but yeah, um, that's that's a that's like a hot take for another time. But um, I do think I do think it, it also depends on where you are in bear country. Yeah. Like if you see a lot of bear scat, especially if you're in grizzly country, you see a lot of bear scat and stuff. I'm hanging a bear bag. Yeah. You can do your homework and f figure out where yeah. the hot spots are too, for sure. But, yeah. um, yeah. all right, JK, you were checking out some of backpacker issues videos Any any questions that you had, this is kind of the floor is yours. Yeah, point. man. I'm, I'm, we got, I got a bone to pick with you, man. All right. Take away. <laughs> so, so you put out this video of, of things to do at your home before you go backpacking. Yeah. Okay. And you, you had some good stuff in there. Like clip your toenails. Good call. I yeah. like you. I have actually torn holes in socks because yeah. my toenail was a little ragged in a spot. I didn't realize it. Cut my toe on my sock. Um, but then you start talking about razors and shaving beards. And Whoa. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I I felt very very attacked. I was I was probably so triggered during your video <laughs> by talking about the fact that by having a longer beard you could get things caught in and attract more bacteria. You basically are saying that I'm committing suicide. By not shaving my beard before I go into the backcountry, and I'm kind of offended by that. So, you should can be. you explain why you would you would yeah. literally uh, section off an entire audience of people yeah. sure. to make a point? Now, to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> I never said shave your beard. No, you said cut I it very short. Trim, trim, trim your beard. Uh, but you said trim it down very short. I did. <laughs> <laughs> because my beard is very short <laughs> and again i believe we've established that 
that not every YouTuber knows everything <laughs> <laughs> and that you have to figure out what's right for you, man. Like it, if you have a different approach, if you want to go all scraggly and, and save some dinner for in the tent through your Bro, face, it's the black and deck. You are yeah, welcome to. Man, it's the Black and Decker flavor saver. You do not down the long beard, man. Like, there's things in there you'll find. Oh, there's a gummy bear, and you're good to go. That's, you know, later nice. on, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Carl's like throwing up in his mouth right now. I I grow a short beard in the winter time, <laughs> but I'm not. Yeah. Like any when I start getting food in the beard, then it's time to to dial that yeah. back for sure. But all right, um, I think that's a fair point though because. I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's wise. If you're super concerned about bears, which it seems like backpackerish is, I think this is a good strategy. If um you're like me who wants to ditch the bear spray, that might not be relevant. So depends on your perspective. Just rub I peanut butter all over your face and go to bed. You'll be fine. <laughs> we'll do a test. Okay. That is not the same thing as having a long beard, gentlemen. I think you're just both I think you are beard racist, both of you. <laughs> No, I don't I'm care. I don't have a strong take about because I'm not because I don't I don't feel like it's that's a relevant issue. All right, what else, Jake? Any other strong reactions you have? Anything you want to challenge him on while you got him? Well, I, I did I have noticed uh that you have not have you backpacked in the states yet? No. Ooh, okay. I feel like that needs to happen. I'm no, are you, invite I are you like inviting him on a trip? Happen. I think you should make your way to Kentucky, man. I got some guys down here. We can show you some pretty cool spots. I'm in. Okay. You need to come down. Man, this is this I'm is in. like on brand for our podcast where invites are thrown, people say yes, and then it just doesn't then typically happen. Never happens. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh we're still gonna invite you. Like here's the thing. <laughs> like here, here's the thing. It, there's a group of us they call us the Kentucky boys. And uh we uh when we go out, it's usually steaks and, and potatoes, like not not dehydrated, freeze-dried actual steaks, you know. And we like to have some good food when we go out. Yeah. And if you're out there with someone like Mr. Backpacking with Jason, sir, which if you listen to the Backpacking Podcast, you'll know who that is. But um, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. But uh, you get a group of us out there, and it can be a lot of fun. Uh, you ought to come. We actually had Ben McMillan from Hilltop Packs drive all the way from Pennsylvania just to do an overnight with us. Nice. Wow. Had a good that's, time. That's yeah. big time. That's big yeah. time. Okay. Hey, well, there you go. Throw your itinerary over, and I'll see what I can do. All right, I'll, get your I'll, I'll talk ready. to the boys and see what we can make happen. Okay. Colorado's way closer, though. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you trying to solicit an invite for me? <laughs> no, no, no. If, if you want to, sure. And you're yeah. welcome to come back to Canada. I mean, you were just like... I just I throw invites out nonstop. We, we got a Patreon trip in the winter range here at the end of the month. And there's, I mean, there's no permit requirements. It's kind of a free-for-all. Anybody's invited to that one. So it's going to hit me up afterwards for sure. But... Um, I don't, I, I want to make sure we get this in. So for those that, um, that want more information about backpacking, this tip tips for newer backpackers, they want to be part of the backpackerish crowd. Um, what do you got going on? Anything yet coming up on your channel or reasons to subscribe? This is kind of your, your turn to promote your, your stuff here, man. My subscriber list is insane. It's huge. I hit, uh, 500 <laughs> two days ago. Did yeah, you? Dude, yeah, man. Today. It yeah. was a good deal for me. So yeah. I'm celebrating that. Um, and it, as far as content, I'm just putting out stuff every week, right? If you want to know tips, tricks, gear stuff, trip advice for Southern Alberta or maybe Kentucky or maybe Colorado, come hang out. Well, you come can tell me out, what man. I did wrong and some new people will learn some stuff from me messing it up and we'll get along. He's got Nathan's got a great presence on his channel, a lot of good information. Definitely check it out. And I think you're going to be blowing up here soon enough. So, um, man, really appreciate you coming on the show. And we'll include uh, links to YouTube channel and socials in the show description. And we hope to have you back on, my friend. Always. <clears throat> All right. So, man, he was a great guest. Really happy to have him on the show. Uh, but you know what? It's time for trivia. I've got myth trivia coming up right after this for you. Do you have a sweat problem? When your clothes get wet, your core temperature can dramatically fluctuate. This can cause hypothermia, heat exhaustion, dehydration, and embarrassment. But Clues' ultralight ventilation backpack frame solves this problem. Install on your favorite pack to create a ventilating airflow gap. Check out this ultralight game changer at VeclusGear.com and use code BLISTERS for five bucks off. So Vaclus is bringing us myth trivia. So, John... 
if you lose trivia, that means you get less than two correct. You got to go on your community page for your actual YouTube channel, not your podcast one, and let everybody know that you were on our show and put a little PS there. I apologize for not putting out a video in like forever. Okay, I'm, I'm in. That's I'm pretty in. easy, right? Yeah, that's easy. All right, you, you pass, you get two or more. What's my punishment? What you got for me? If uh, if I get two questions right, the next time you go packpacking with Derek, uh, you have to wear your backpack like normal, but then you have to wear his backwards for the first three to five miles. Three to time. five miles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I gotta, that's like, that's gonna be so long from now. It's, it's for an now. hour and a half, man. It's an hour yeah. and a half. Yeah, okay. Dude, three to five miles was forever on the trip we just went on. That was a crazy Oh uh, Yeah, you trail. were in a different situation there, though. Yeah, so I, yeah, I could three to five. I'll, I'll do three, three miles. We won't even three do miles. three to five. We'll just do three yeah, miles. Three miles, and he might not, and this is assuming he lets me. He might be like, you're just going to not let me live this down if I get my pack. So yeah. he has to let me, and uh, I'll, si I'll cite this, but yeah, that's fair. And not really fair. It it's video. actually, you got the easier, you got the easier one, so. I hope that these questions are hard as a result. So here we go. I was kind of surprised that you didn't go harder with it. Like, to be honest, I thought you'd give me a really good one. Yeah, this is our first time kind of structuring it this way. So next time I'll probably dial it up. If you're willing oh, to come back enough. on the show for this, we'll, we'll see how you, if you want to come back on after the trivia. So. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Number one, known as the Patterson Gimlin film from 1967, this shaky camera video is the most famous footage of which creature? The Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster is incorrect. Are you serious right now? Yeah, this I have like, no idea what you're talking about. the easiest question. It's the Bigfoot. It's the one where the Bigfoot's like walking and he kind of look, looks back at the camera from 1967. They I, show I this. I did not know that. Really? I didn't, well, I didn't know it was filmed There's in like 1967. There's like a ton of Bigfoot in Kentucky. Come on. Well, yeah, but we actually see them. Oh, that's true. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I thought the shaky camera thing would have given it away, but yeah, that's all right. I'm fine with you missing I'm that terrible. one. I know you don't want to have to carry that backpack. So you're, you're okay with it. Yeah. I kind of feel bad because now I don't know. This next one's going to be harder. If I, if I need to give you multiple choice in this next one, I'll, I'll think of it on the spot here. Number two, Okay. what hairless dog like creature is famous in Latin America for behaving like a vampire toward other animals? The chupacabra. The chupacabra is correct. Okay. You want to get one of them. How do you know that one and not the other one? Well, you like give me this thing of like <laughs> the 1967 film by yeah. uh, masterpiece thought... filmmaker, blah, 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 with shaky film footage. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking it was like something from a movie. I mean, technically it is, but um, yeah. I've, yeah, I just assumed you had a backpacking podcast. You probably know backpacking stuff. Sorry. Yeah, I'm definitely on the backpacking podcast, but uh, we don't do a lot of, <laughs> of myths about Bigfoot that we, you guys have cornered the market on that. We just don't, we don't even talk pros. about that often. You just, <laughs> you just happen to bring it up when we were on your show. So that's kind of funny, but um, all right, this is for, this is for all the marbles here. So number three, this is a multiple choice one. Okay. According to backpacking magazine, which mythical creature is most likely to actually exist? A, a unicorn, B, Yeti, C, centaurs, or D, any animal that speaks fluent English? Backpacking magazine doesn't exist. You're, oh, you figured that out. You're, you, you're a rare breed. Yes. So did so I get it right then? No, you got it. No, it's not a trick question. It, it's then you got to oh. default to common sense here. Okay. So, so I would say um, any animal that speaks English. You think that the, any animal that speaks not English but fluent English is most likely to exist. are human beings not considered animals? Uh, not in this scenario. Which oh, we'll myth? Is, no, it's myth. I thought we were doing. Si I thought we were doing science. Which mythical? <laughs> <laughs> I thought backpacking magic was based on science. That's the best line right there. Oh my gosh. The question is, which mythical creature is most likely to actually exist? And you said an any animal that speaks fluent English. It's incorrect. Incorrect. It is the Yeti. The I, Yeti. Will be posting, I will be posting on my, uh, <laughs> my uh, community page here soon. Um, okay. I will tell you, though, funny thing I found out about unicorns. Um, there, there's a lot of proof that at some point in the past, they actually did exist. Then why didn't so, you guess that one? Because it was way more fun with the answer I gave. That's true. That's true. Okay. What, I like, mean, we're there's, here for they, laughs, there's like, um, fossils of the horses with horns. They've found something that looks like that. 
Okay. And also, there's a lot of people that believe that they called rhinos unicorns at one point. Oh. So. Maybe like the yeah. the modified version of the rhino, the skinny skinny rhino. Well, there, there are smaller rhinos out Can there. Can you so. ride a rhino? I mean, you could try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you could try to ride anything. Yeah, I mean, you could tame one like you raise it from like it's a cub, whatever the rhino, little baby Maybe. rhinos are called. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Something to think about. We'll, we'll get back. We'll circle back on that. We'll have like a zoologist on here. We'll ask that question. So, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So time for tidbits. I've got, uh, I got one. I, I'm going to kick one to you. So we've got, we have a new Patreon supporter, Indiana Casey. Thank you for joining Patreon. I reached back out to Indiana Casey. I wanted to get Indiana Casey's backpacking story and, uh, hasn't responded. So just appreciate you supporting us. We don't get a lot of Patreon supporters. So thank you so much, Indiana Casey. Uh, second tidbit is, in case you need it, what's going on with the Backpacking Podcast? Your chance to promote anything related to your show, my friend. Uh, we got a new show out every Wednesday, and okay. uh, we've been doing that now since 2020. So we're three yeah. years in. Yes, We're going to hit, I think by the end of the year, we're going to hit our, I believe, one, what did we figure out the other day? 200 episodes 200 man that's awesome 200 episodes at the end of the yeah. year so okay. that's pretty cool you have this on uh, for the 200th episode is that what you're saying yeah. live streams start back up in september so we'll be having a lot of guests on a lot of craziness happening and as always there'll be the poop questions so everybody's got that to look mm. forward to so okay uh, it's going to be a good time okay yeah we we love you and jeremiah man you guys are the best and oh you guys are awesome man it's always a privilege to have you and or him on the show but um yeah so definitely I'm sure people that have checked out our, our podcast have probably checked out Backpacking Podcast. But if you're new here, check out JK. He's got a lot of good stuff, and he's way smarter than me. So definitely. That is not true. Uh, debatable. Debatable. We'll leave it at that. So <laughs> thanks. Hey, JK, seriously appreciate you co-host this episode with me. Uh, always a pre pleasure and a privilege, and definitely will have you back on whenever I can, whenever I can get rid of Derek for a show. So um, thanks for everybody else that joined us on the show. If you're new to the show, please check us out on YouTube as well. Please subscribe. We really value you and have a great week, everybody. God bless. <laughs>